welcome to this week's edition of FWS. As always, I'm your host, Clinton Whitmire, with my co-host... Chris Porter. That's it, Chris Porter. So we're going to cover three topics, as usual today, although we're always going to delve into whatever other areas we kind of come across as we get there. First and foremost, there was some recent news that Pandora is being sued by oldies stations. I'm not sure how many people who listen to Pandora listen to oldies anyway, but they're being sued for the rights to play it. Well, I would disagree with you there, but keep going. All right. Well, we'll talk about old people in a little minute. As you may have already noticed, the monstrosities here, we're going to do a death battle competition, Koirig versus Nespresso. We will see who wins later in the episode. And the last thing we're going to talk about is all of the problems we get when trying to order things like these coffee machines to your house. We're going to examine that as well with some recent anecdotes. So uh, launching right in to Sounds the first good. segment. Pandora, for those of you who don't know, is a streaming music station. You probably do know that. But in case you don't, check it out. It's a really cool way to listen to music. But it sounds like if they lose a lawsuit that's recently been filed by the record companies, you might be listening to less music or at least less music from before 1972. Right, so there's a few uh, music companies, or not music companies, but... Record labels. Record uh, labels, yeah, yeah, that have decided they want to sue Pandora over uh, music that was produced before 1972. I guess there was some sort of... uh, The copyrights weren't filed until 1972 or or something like that. The the federal copyright law sort of came into effect in 1972. We're not lawyers by any means. Otherwise, you probably shouldn't watch the show. Nobody wants to hear more from lawyers. No offense to any lawyers who are watching... But um, Now, you just said you don't think old people listen to Pandora. And, and let's explain what Pandora is just for people who, who for the have old been people in who don't listen to Pandora but might want to listen to Pandora. <laughs> this is what Pandora does. All right. So Pandora is an internet streaming music service that lets you create your own internet radio stations, right? So, for instance, I could go in there and enter an artist or the name song, of a track. Or a genre, even, I believe. Right. So, like, I go in and say, I want to create a radio station based around Nora Jones, okay? And... They will play not only Nora Jones music, but mu- music similar to Nora Jones. They've created an algorithm, essentially, that they call the Music Genome Project. Now, here's my question. Pandora, you know, I started listening to Pandora when I first got into internet streaming probably five or six years ago. I don't really use Pandora much anymore, though. You know, I like Pandora because it's cheap. It doesn't really cost much How money. How much does Pandora cost? You know, there used to be two different ways to pay for it. You used to be able to pay either like $30 a year or $3.99 a month. Now, okay. last month, they actually just raised that price to $4.99 a month. But there's also a free version? Most people just use free so ad-supported. So commercials. Right. Like, right. like you listen to a regular rate. So long story short, for those of you who are you know in a cave or old or you know whatever, Pandora is basically like online radio. But rather than saying, oh, I listen to the rock station, you can be more specific than that. Right, it's personalized. So, and you can thumbs up and thumbs down, and then it'll curate that station but, over time. So I don't really use Pandora that often either. But and old, part of the reason you don't is why? Because there's better stuff out there? There's better stuff out there. But before we get to that, I want to, I want to address your old question. For, all right. All right. So well, it wasn't a question. It was a it's not, not a question. It's a statement. I have a lot of... I have a lot of audio video clients, as we've discussed in previous episodes, that use Pandora like crazy. And I would actually suggest that it's more the 40 to 60 year old people that use Pandora nowadays mm-hmm. because they're not familiar with these uh, with all the other services that are out there. So you're saying sort of like at first all the cool kids had iPhones. Exactly. And now like the or older like generation has iPhones. Right. And like the younger kids, all the hipsters are using Android. Exactly. So Pandora is the iPhone of the internet streaming radio market. Or I, I think it's more the Facebook of the internet streaming okay. music. And, and so, you know, here's actually how I use I Pandora guess, the I most. The one thing about it, though, is at least you don't have to get like annoying grandkid pictures or something like that Well, Pandora. Well, yes and no. What I do with my clients is... So, so hold on, they, your clients tend to be an older demographic, I they, guess? Yeah, yeah, because they have money, you know, they, and they can afford to have these, these high-end they, they custom can, installations. Do they, uh, can, they can afford to have an expert like Chris Porter come in and make everything work. Exactly. Fortunately, he's my friend, but, so but, 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 I but here's the rub. for it, but he definitely does it for us, too. What they, what they don't do is create Pandora accounts of their own. What I end up doing is actually putting my Pandora account on their streaming device, so whether that's a Blu-ray player or a Sonos audio system, which we'll talk about in another episode, um, I end up actually creating like a crowdsourced Pandora channel with my username and login, and then they they all use it. 
So when I go into Pandora, there's hundreds of stations there that I've never seen or even used before. But it's kind of interesting in so a way because that you don't know about or wouldn't have thought to create your own station. I've definitely been at your house when he's decided he's going to play uh, play all Pandora stations. The quick mix, mash, yeah. The quick mix, apparently, as we call it. It's bizarre. I mean, sometimes <laughs> it's interesting, but you, you can literally hear like death metal, which is probably put on by me, to, uh, you know, like followed by jazz and opera. The next thing, it's really it's really off the wall when you do the quick mix with... Uh, yeah, and the funny thing is, I just actually, I just got a uh, notice from Pandora that says you have maxed out the number of radio stations that you can create. So now they're actually going through and deleting a radio station every time somebody new creates one. Now, you theor- does Pandora theoretically allow you to have it as use on well, yeah. as many devices as you have? I, I probably shouldn't even be saying on this, you know, on online. But um, you know, I don't know. But I've been doing it for a while. I, I don't pay for the Pandora account, and who knows? Maybe they'll take it away from me now. But um, you know, it's actually been a more interesting way to use Pandora, if you ask me. Because my biggest problem with Pandora right. is that. It seems like every time you create a radio station, you get like the same 12 songs played over and over and over again. And so for me, Pandora isn't enough just because it it, it, it lacks the variety, I feel like, that I really need. Yeah. So, you know, I, I use Pandora occasionally, usually when I use Pandora primarily when I can't decide what the hell I want to listen to. But what I do use most of all is Spotify. So I guess which is... Right. I don't know if it's the, the number two, but <clears throat> I guess it has probably as much. I don't know. How would you describe? I mean, Spotify. Yeah, so, you know, I, w- to Pandora. I would say that Spotify is similar to Pandora, but it adds another layer on top of that, right? Spotify does have that same radio feature where you can create stations based but that's around not what, artists that's or like. It's not how it started. About. It's not how it started. Spotify was more like, look, you're going to pay us a subscription fee of, I don't know, somewhere between $7 and $10 a There's month. Different levels, yeah. And. You know, we're going to give you access to our entire catalog, which means if I want to bring up, you know, Nora Jones' entire discography, I can do that. Well, I think to make it, to put it a different way, if I want to hear, and I don't know any Nora Jones song, so I can't use that as an example, okay. but if I wanted to hear Sweet Child of Mine, I can go in and specifically hear Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. On exactly. On Pandora, I could create Guns N' Roses radio, and might I it. might get some Guns N' Roses songs, but I might. might have to listen for a couple of hours to actually get Sweet Child of Mine. So this way, at least, with Spotify, it's just like sort of having your own iTunes account, your, your own music, but you have access to everything to play it when you want. Now, the other thing I do like about Spotify and when I started actually, the reason I started subscribing to Spotify in the first place is one of the features of being a premium member is you can download songs and listen to them offline. So even when you don't have radio access, internet access, which is important when you're on an airplane or something like that, uh, or in a subway, wherever with no internet, I can still listen to preset playlists that I want to hear. Right. And that's a feature that, you know, somebody like Pandora obviously does not offer. Right. And and you've that's actually used that uh, feature to to some extent. Well, yeah. Uh, so th- th- we got it. We used it to sort. Of, well, the plan was for this to be used as our wedding playlist. So we stayed up many many nights get, in advance of the wedding, um, only to find out that the Italian host of the wedding thought that they were better DJs than we were. Plugged in their own iPod rather than playing to the damn playlist that I took. You know, literally, uh, oh, two weeks to create in actual time. And needless to say, there had been a lot of booze consumed up to that point. So by the time these fuckers stopped playing my song, I started getting pretty angry. Um, it brought the, edi- the wedding to an earlier close than some <laughs> people would have expected. So it wasn't Spotify's fault, though. Let's, let's be clear. It was Italian fuckers in their techno DJ bullshit rather than just playing the songs that I knew were going to work for the audience that we had, which is a basically a bunch of children of the 90s and, well, some of the 80s as well, but... You know, that kind of stuff. Right, right. I didn't want to hear like, well, whatever Italian people listen to. Right. Well, and you know what? Neither did we, to tell right. you the truth. <laughs> right. You know, your playlist was much better than that, guys. And for, for I really audience, wish you just listened to. For our audience, it was. But but the point was, think about, that's a pretty cool tool. If you think about how much it costs, if you want to host a party or you want to have a wedding or something like that, you don't have to pay some right. DJ. You know, you pay, hell, just subscribe for one month. Now, it does take some time to build that playlist together. 
But you were even you on a trial subscription when we first did that, were you? Or yeah, you had you already gone ahead and paid for that? I think I didn't see there was any other way for me to get the music situation worked out, so I just went ahead you went and, and did paid. It. But I'm still using it now a couple years later because I, and, I really like it that much. I mean, you, do you still use it a lot? Because I don't really use Spotify that much. Yeah, so you know, that's probably a good segue into what I do use a lot. It really depends on my mood. A lot of times we'll be sitting around and somebody's like, oh, did you hear this new song that came out? Uh-huh. Or, oh, I heard this song on the radio. That's kind of a lot of so, times why I use Spotify. So you use it to find a specific song or artist. Right. If I'm in, this, if I'm in the mood for like an Ozzy Osbourne kind of extravaganza, I'll go do that because unlike Pandora, oh, yeah. I can listen to 20 Ozzy Osbourne songs where if I do an Ozzy Osbourne station on Pandora, I'm going to get one and then I'm yeah. going to hear some Journey and I'm going to hear some Metallica or whatever and I just want to actually hear some fucking Ozzy Osbourne. Right. When you when your heavy metal friends come over, you guys tend to yeah. like to pull out the Spotify well, and drive me crazy. As long as the wives aren't around, <laughs> we can't we can't do some of that stuff when the wives are around. But but what I do use more often, I do occasionally use Pandora, is Songza, which is probably right. the one you should talk about. Which is a which yeah. is a kind of a newer entry into the whole music space. And you know, I'm not even sure to be totally honest if there's a way to pay for songs or not. I certainly have never paid a dime for Songza, and you know, enjoy the heck out of it. Now the way that Songs is a little bit different. Is they give you a little bit more options in terms of choosing your music. One thing I really love about songs is you can choose by activity. So you can say, I'm having dinner with friends. Play some music for me. I don't know what the hell I want to listen to. Just play play me some dinner music because that's what we're doing. Or I'm going I'm going on a bike ride. Play me some music I'm in my earbuds while I'm riding the bike. Songs will also sort of uh, give you sort of filters by room. So I'm in the living room. I'm in the right. kitchen. I'm in the den. I'm in the dining room. I'm in the boys' room. You know, whatever. They have different categories like this. Or I'm on the patio. Right. So if you don't want to think, what I like about songs is that's I me. can't decide yeah. what I want to do. Right. It gives me some ideas like, oh, I, I am on the patio right, right now. Let me see what's on the patio. And now sometimes I won't find what I'm looking for or I'll try station yeah. and after a couple of songs. I'm like, eh, it's yeah. not the vibe. I get a, well, that happens a lot to me on songs where you're like, I kind of have to a lot of times try like three or four before I kind of find the one I'm really looking for. You know, like I use songs a lot on Sunday mornings, you know, when cooking breakfast or something like that. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I want to listen to. Just play something. But usually the first one is not the one I want. Yeah. I had to try two or three, but... It's a really great discovery tool for me because I end up listening to a lot of stuff that I wouldn't otherwise well, one listen thing, to. One thing I do like is if you do go, I'm on the patio, chilling with friends, that still pulls up like three or four playlists that are in different genres of music. Right. One might be like a more electronic music driven thing. One might be like folk singers. One might be like classic rock. Right. So it's not that, oh, that for each category, there's one option. There's multiple range of options. And I do, while I rarely hit it on the first time, I do usually find a lot of playlists. I think I really like the Euro... Hotel lounge track. That one's pretty good. It's kind of, and you know what I really use songs a lot is when people come over. Yes, great for entertaining. It's good for finding backer music because honestly, I wouldn't know like on Pandora or Spotify. Oh, what is the name of some Euro? Right. Basically, exactly. When I really needed the Italian guys around (laughs) for my wedding, they're not there at your house. Well, now you can get that songs are for you right there. The the one thing I don't like about songs are. At least maybe maybe this isn't a songs a problem. Maybe this is a, an Italian DJ type problem, electronic music problem. But there might be a track and you dislike it and say, I don't want to hear it again. The problem is with techno stuff, they remix this fucking same song like by a hundred different DJs. Oh. So even though you dislike it, and it comes the back. same, another version of the song keeps coming <laughs> on. And I'm like, man, and some of these songs are like 10 minutes long. I'm like, just, just, God damn it, I don't want to hear this well, song it's, anymore. It's totally different. It's different. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, instead of going, do 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 do, we go, do 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 do. I mean, it's fucking, anyway, that's not Songs' fault. That's just techno music's fault. Right. Now, the one that I end up using. I do I do like it though. Especially I love songs though. Well, I like songs, and I like I like some electro music from time to time. I just wish there weren't so many damn remixes. That that's all I'm saying. Well, I personally love remixes, so you you can kill them. I'll I'll take them. So I love I love using songs a lot. The other one, the other service that I really use a lot is Google Play Music. I've really sort of become addicted to Google Play Music. Now we talked about Chromecast in our first episode. I'm a big Chromecast fan, and one of the reasons that I use Google Play Music is because it works so seamlessly with the Chromecast and allows me to send stuff to my stereo, just cast stuff to my stereo system from my phone. But the other thing that Google Play Music does is, in addition to having the radio features that Pandora and Spotify have, in addition to having that entire library collection, it also allows you to sync your, your personal music library that's loaded into iTunes up to Google's cloud and have that available to you as well. So 
you know, you have all three options, the radio, their library, and your own personal library to choose from. Don't, and I love that. If it is in your library, do they take the actual version of the track that you have, or do they sort of replace it with a generic no, I think they take the actual version from your library because, okay. you know, the one downside to Google Play Music when you're originally uh, setting it up, when you're trying to sync it with that iTunes library, is that sometimes it takes, depending on the size of your music library, up to like a week to upload right. all your data into it. Now, you know... So do you like Google Play because, for, other than the Chromecast, do you like it because it has your music library in there? Is I like it because it has... a feature for you? I like it because it has everything right? Because I can go in there and I can do that Nora Jones radio if I want, or I can just pull, pull the stuff that I've got in my library that might not, that might be some, you know, discrete track that the, their library doesn't have, right? So, you know, all of these people have large libraries, but none of them are fully complete. Right. And so there, there may be a few tracks here and there that you want to hear. The other thing it does is it looks at your library and it sort of recommends other things based on that, right? So they'll say, oh, we see that you've got this kind of stuff in your library. Maybe you'd be interested in this. And so it does a good job for me of sort of surfacing new content and helping me discover things in, the, in a similar way that songs it does. So it basically does what Google always does, which is it tries to take all the possible relevant data that's out there and kind of combine it into something that's useful for the consumer. Yeah, and I think they've, personally, I think they've done a great job. They also, you know, you you see on Google search, I'm the I'm feeling lucky button, which I don't know that anybody ever uses that anymore, but... Except for some, like, sort of joke things that are apparently in there from time to time. Oh, like, like the Easter for, eggs and stuff? I don't know about the, well, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about when I say Easter eggs, right? I'm sure this is some tech term, but I think it's a thing where like, you know, <laughs> like if hidden, you, you type in a certain phrase and you're right, definitely right. going to get some weird answer right, right, that right. makes fun of it. But they have they have something called I'm Feeling Lucky Radio, okay. which is basically kind of like, we'll, we'll figure it out for you. We'll pick something for you. Similar to the sense that like, you don't know what you want to play. I just want you to play something mm -hmm. interesting. Now, I've had mixed results so far with the I'm Feeling Lucky Radio because it pulls from so many different places. It seems to be kind of a mishmash, but it is, it's kind of neat sometimes well, when you, you, do you don't know what you want. You do Pandora Quick Mix anyway. Right, exactly. It's very well, similar to the Pandora Quick I will Mix. Say, I mean, see, the thing for me is I don't, I don't have a Chromecast, so I don't have that reason to use it. And I don't know, like so many But you do have Sonos, and they just added Google Play on, Music to Sonos. On. You're missing the second point I was about to say, which is most of my you know, downloaded music is all fucking lost because even though we did back right. up a hard drive, the USB backup, the hard drive that we had, some point fucked up. Right. And so I don't actually have that big of a music library anymore. And so because of Spotify, I don't even go about trying to recreate it. So well, it sort and, of sucks. And but. that makes sense. You know, if, if you don't already have a music library, I'm not sure it really makes sense anymore to just be creating one if you don't have a bunch of CDs that you rip to your computer. Yeah. Now, Google Play Music actually got me to pull out all my old CDs that had all the MP3s that I downloaded from Napster Back in the 90s. <laughs> well, I had, I had done that already and then got rid of the CD because I had it all electronically. So it just goes to show you, back up everything twice. Yeah, if definitely. You, well, <laughs> well, if you only back it up once and deleted it, you don't really have a backup for well, one. But Well, no, well, I, well yeah, so, well. it was a, <laughs> That's another story. We were moving. We got rid of the laptop. I yeah, know. I, I know. I tried to repair it. I tried to get yeah. your hard drive working again. I couldn't. Yeah. And so anyway, I think there might be like an old version of the iPod, somewhere like the old big gray iPod right. that I was using as a backup device when it used to work that way pretty easily. Right. That actually might have a lot of this stuff on it. So I've got to dig that thing out of storage and hope it hadn't broken either. But that, that was actually nice, wasn't it? Back when they would allow you to use an iPod as basically a storage hard I mean, drive. I sort of liked the iPod more for the storage factor than for the damn music that it played. I really wish that, no, that's why I used to use it. I used to use it as a large, I mean, not a large, a large capacity, small, but, a, but, easy to carry and, right. and portable hard drive yeah. and i used to just transfer large files onto it and it was the, it was the best portable hard drive around all right hang on hang on a second i got my dog making aggravating licking noises it's, going, yeah. it's fine it's fine Stop licking. You, it, i'm not saying he's coming <laughs> up on the mic it's just annoying to hear like i'm pretty sure most of you wouldn't want to listen to a show where chris talks and i go <laughs> I mean, and, maybe, and yet that's what they're listening to right well, now. You know, not the whole show but i mean if, if you guys like it we can certainly make that show it's not very difficult so, well, all right. Well, you know, I think we probably covered these music services about as 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 far as much as anybody wants to hear us cover them. Well, you know, I, I'll say this: I kind of use them all, except Google Play. I use them all for different times, 
uh, if you do have a big music service, I, I think that, I think this is actually the thing. This is why I use Spotify more than Google Play, and why you use Google Play more than Spotify is because you already have a lot of the songs that you want to hear. Where for me, because I've lost all the songs I have, Spotify is sort of my alternative to my library that I used to have. But I gotta be honest, I don't I don't listen to my library that much. Yeah, it's just nice to have like ten percent of the time. I, the thing I use most often is the radio features of Google Music, which I could be getting for free on Pandora, and yet I pay seven ninety nine a month for the Google Play Music and just enjoy the user experience a lot more there well, because it has everything in one place, and I don't feel like I have to go use Pandora and Spotify and songs. I feel like I can get everything in one, pla- one spot. Well, you can, and one way to do that is Sonos. We'll talk about Sonos is a cool thing. We'll talk do a full show on Sonos later. But it does sort of aggregate them into one place. Right, that's true. So, so that's a cool thing, but we probably need to talk about coffee. Let's do it. So this is, like I said, the celebrity death match of coffee machines. <laughs> Coiring, the dominant brand in the U.S. for sure. Absolutely. Espresso, the dominant brand in Europe. I mean, this is probably like the fourth or fifth one of these I've had. Now, hold on a second. I want to I ask a question because right. you say... Keurig. I don't. Even, I can't even say the what you. I say. I say Keurig. Okay, that's you probably say, right. No, I, I think maybe probably you're right. I, I'm not really sure. I'd love to hear some feedback from you all on the actual proper way to pronounce this thing. I say Keurig. You say care care. You say tomato. I say tomato. I don't. I don't really know. Send us um, an email and tell us how to pronounce this. I'm pretty sure it's cure. Well, if that was a German word. Is it? Is it? It's well, not I'm a German. Sure originally, First it was all, probably a German. Well, 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 let's talk about where Keurig came from. Well, I don't know where the fuck did it come from. Green Mountain Coffee. Green Mountain Coffee. You know what Green Mountain Coffee is? It's a bunch of bastards. It's convenience store coffee. That's where they got their start. Well, I don't know if that's where they got the start, but that's where you'll find Green Mountain Coffee. Walk into a convenience store, get a cup of coffee. Most of the time, it's going to be Green Mountain Coffee. And if you think about convenience store coffee, not exactly the greatest coffee in the world. And yet, this is what everybody has in their homes in the U.S. Well, yeah, I personally don't understand why people have it. Um, well, because I've been an espresso sort of person for a while, but we are going to do try to do a fair, unbiased taste test here a little bit later after we talk about some of the features that each have. But so I think one thing to talk about is this: in most countries in Europe, not necessarily England, but the majority of countries in Europe, if you say I want a coffee, you will get a shot of espresso. If you want what Americans consider a cup of coffee, that would be, in most places, a cafe americano, which is literally just a shot of espresso with some hot water in there to make it take up more volume. Basically, it's a watered-down coffee. It's a watered-down espresso, right? So, right. You know, it is what it is, right? Americans brew coffee by the pot. Europeans literally do it by the shot, right? I think it's probably by the pot, by the shot. That's basically the difference. So, you know, when I think about the fact that Americans drink coffee by the pot, and, you know, I, I grew up drinking it that way, too, you know... This is certainly not cheaper than just brewing a pot of coffee. No, but it's a lot more convenient. That, that's the only thing. It's the convenience of getting, it takes me two seconds. I don't have to get up early, you know, fill everything up. Right, I remember well, my grandparents would actually like at night before they go to bed, get the coffee machine ready. So when they woke up, they just hit the button right, and it be, while they were in the shower. Or or there'd be like a time. My mom had one had a timer, right? And every oh, morning right. at 6.30, it would just sort of start. Coffee and, machines with timers. That was cool because it's like it could wake you up. You could smell it. Yeah, you would brewing. smell the, the fresh cup of Folgers yeah. in your... Neither one of these will do that, I think, for sure, is the point. I don't know if they will or not. I haven't really done that much but research. Here, but here's what, here's what gets me, right? I'm shocked at the number of people I encounter who don't understand when they're going to Starbucks what they're getting. So a lot of people go to Starbucks and get a latte or get a cappuccino. I think they think that it's the same thing as what they drink at home, just that Starbucks somehow makes it magic and Starbucks is better. What they don't, what I think they're just it, getting a European cup of coffee. I think, yeah, like surprise. I mean, it seems like obvious to you and me, and probably like eighty percent. Well, of no, I mean, it wasn't obvious to me until until I just bought an espresso. You know, I had the Keurig, and I, mean, I was like every other American. Not now. If you get a black coffee, okay, that's different. But if you go to Starbucks and you get a latte or cappuccino or you know whatever macchiato, which what they serve is not really a macchiato, but re- regardless, you get it. What you are getting is certain number of shots of espresso, one, two, or maybe three, and a bunch of freaking milk. That's either foamed or steamed but it's hot milk and a couple shots of espresso that's what makes it that big it's not that it's that much coffee and milk and starbucks just does some magic <clears throat> that it's, makes it better it's just less watered down well it's, it's just a different fucking drink all the way around yeah and so if you like starbucks coffee there's no don't, don't even if you're trying to recreate starbucks at home you're going to get much closer with an espresso machine absolutely if you're the person who i like my pot of coffee or i like to go to the diner and just get the bottle then you know odds are 
this is probably more what you're used to. Right. I think, I still think what comes out of this machine is better, but well, we'll get to that. And, and do you know that the, the new Keurigs are going to actually brew an entire pot? The Keurig 2.0, as they call it, which is going to contain DRM, digital rights management, similar to things like MP3s that you've downloaded before that can only be put on a certain number of devices. So they're trying, Keurig uh, had a had a patent on these K-cups, as they call them, that you stick in there. And the patent ran out in 2012. And ever since then, everybody and their brother, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Panera apparently, produces now K-cups for less expensive typically than Keurig does because they don't have to pay them a licensing right. fee so, anymore. So that's, so that's one thing. If we start to talk about these products, Nespresso for a long time, literally until last week, it was, you could only buy from Nespresso. Right. Then their capsules, you can see... Much smaller. Or much smaller. But again, you need less coffee to make a shot of espresso than you do to make a big, full American kind of giant cup. But dude, those, those cups... They're half empty. Yeah, they're half empty anyway. So I'm not even sure there is more coffee in there. there. There's, there's, there's a little bit more. But, but regardless, the point was, Nespresso, you could only buy from Nespresso. Now, that being said, Nespresso had literally dozens of various varieties, decafs, strong, less... So you had a lot of options. However, but, but still okay. mainly coffee, right? I mean, one, one thing I think people do really like about the K-Cups is they can get coffee, they can get tea, they can get hot apple cider, they can get hot chocolate, they can get all sorts of different things. And I think that actually plays a pretty big role in, well, I think into the, the soup cure. or something out of it now. I've heard, really? I've, I've I haven't seen some, the soup. Like somebody's trying to like use it to make soup. Uh, that, doesn't, like, oh, that doesn't sound Well, you know, whatever. The more people can do with it, the better. It's the new cro the crock pot of the uh, 21st century. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Or maybe just crock. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. But the other thing to mention is that uh, the Keurig is a lot less expensive in general than but is the it, Nespresso. It's also you know? a lot bigger, as you can see here. Right. And, um, but the, but the Keurig started as low as about seventy bucks for the for the single. This one runs about one fifty. Whereas these Nespresso's two to three hundred dollars easily. Now now the, the Nespresso model that we have here actually comes with a milk frother, right? Built in, which is cool because it's compact. The buying a milk frother though by itself is only it's a relatively I don't know, like a forty dollar type and twenty five forty dollar investment. Yeah, well, and when you buy it with an Nespresso, it ends up costing you a hundred dollars more. I don't think it's that much. It's, is it? it is. It was two. It's two hundred dollars. Or on Amazon, uh, a couple of months ago, it was two hundred dollars without the mi the milk frother. Mm -hmm. It was three hundred with the milk frother. But I definitely like the built in. The I, I like works. the milk. It, it looks built good. in as well. Definitely, I think aesthetically, this is better. There are some it's smaller cures. Way as well. smaller. But I will say this. So one thing, and we're actually the coffee we're about to test here. Both companies now, or not both companies, but for both both of these, this is one brand that makes. You can make your own capsule. So, for example, you can say, well, you know, I want to go buy, I like Star. If you're a Starbucks person, you can go buy a Starbucks espresso or, you know, a regular coffee if you had a Keurig, Keurig, whatever we're calling these things. And it's an empty little capsule about the same size. Well, you know, obviously it has to be the same size to fit in the machine that you can actually fill with the coffee of your choice. Right. So what you see here, Illy, which is one of the, you know, sort of leading your uh, Italian espresso companies, so it's delicious. So we've kind of tried them all, and it makes me love my Nespresso machine even more than before because I like that Illy coffee and the Starbucks coffee way better than what Nespresso was. Well, not only that, but it's, it's a lot cheaper. less expensive to do it that yeah. way, right? It ends up costing about a dollar per pod when you do it with an Nespresso right. stuff. is more like 40 to 50 cents uh, each about, yeah, about when, you, when cents. you you know make it yourself. And you're getting what I think is a better coffee. So it's, it's way it's better. A double, yeah. It's a double benefit. Now, one thing that... The, this Keurig has, the lower end Keurigs do not have an espresso option. They just have sort of regular sized coffee and giant coffee, right. like Americans like. Which was the one that, you know, and I had, before I got an espresso, I had the, the Keurig and it actually ended up breaking on me. And I could, I, you know what? I never liked it because I always felt like what you were, exactly what you're saying, that I was just getting this watered down, bland coffee. And so I haven't used the one with the, with the short cup. I don't know if it's technically an espresso or not. It's definitely, though, a shorter cup and less water. So uh, we're going to, are we going to test them yeah, out? So or what we're are we going to do? Test them out. One thing I'll say is, you know, when you look, when you put in the Keurig, you have to take it out after every one. The Nespresso actually, after you use it, it dispenses the old one that flips out in into this bottom thing. Did I just screw something up? No, you're fine. I wasn't sure if there was one in there that needed to be used. No, you're fine. Uh, yeah, but, uh, okay, one fell. Okay. But you can actually see, right? So here's where the old ones go. And so, you know, depending on how often you use it, every few days or every week, 
you throw out the old thing. So I think that's an, a, one thing that's cool about the Nespresso. They both have detachable water tanks. Again, I rarely actually detach them. I usually just get like a cup and pour them, pour them into the detachable, into the reservoirs myself. But there's different ways to do it. I will say this. We talked about this Keurig has three sizes, an espresso quote unquote size and a two larger sizes. Some only have two. Pretty much all Nespresso's that I'm aware have a regular espresso and a Lungo, a long, a longer coffee, which I would say still is not as large as a standard cup of American Joe. But it's, um, you know, if you if you are a person who says, well, I don't want two shots of espresso and a lot of milk, I still want a primarily coffee-based drink, you can do a Lungo. Do you ever use the Lungo? In the beginning when we first got it, I did, but now I just pretty much drink espresso. I haven't used it yet and because I, I, I don't know what I'm going to get. So I, maybe I should try here's it. What, here's what we're going to do. Now, we did mention the disposable capsules that are available both for uh, Keurig and Nespresso. That is what we're going to use for the Nespresso machine, and we're going to use Itty uh, Espresso. Now, we have a reusable Keurig right. capsule. So this is, you know, again, it's something where you can put your own coffee into a Keurig, but... This is a reusable one, so you have to clean it yeah. every time. Pick your poison if you like that. We've, you know, some reviews I know where we read say that these things eventually break down over time. And I gotta say, when I did have a Keurig, you know, I had this, I didn't use it ever because I felt like it took away the convenience factor for me having to refill and clean this right. thing all the time. I just didn't buy yeah, it. If you got people over, you got, yeah, if you got people over and you have to dispose, clean this every it's time a, you want to use a it pain to pay the ass. ass. So, regardless, we're going to use Illy Coffee, the exact same amount of Illy Espresso in both the Nespresso yeah. machine and, uh, and the Keurig. We're going to try to do a little bit of an apples to apples comparison so, and sort of see, give you guys our feedback on what we think about, you know, the difference between the two. Now, we've never tried this, so we don't really know what the yeah. result is going to be. And the other thing that we're going to do is that we're going to actually uh, also show you here exactly you know how much noise they make exactly so which one are we going to do first we're going to do the nespresso whichever one you guys want to do okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to do the nespresso now and while that's happening dasha is going to fill the uh espresso grinds don't worry about the milk for now it's filled the espresso grind espresso grinds into this reusable curry cup so it's going to be a little bit of noise but we're going to we want to just sort of do it in order to show you exactly how is much noise it makes there? yep you're ready to go all right so i'm going to press the small button one time and that's going to begin the process. Apologies for the noise. Check out the decibel meter. Go ahead. So it's not, you know, particularly loud. You hear it a little bit, um, but not really much louder than us talking, I don't think. Well, you know, one issue with you talking is that it throws off the decibel meter. But, you know, we're at about 80 dB. It smells really good. So we're, we were around 80 dB before before you started talking. So let's let's say 80 there, and then let's now let's uh, let's test out the Keurig. Okay, we need to. So I'm Are making you ready? sure I'm yeah. the, pressing yeah. the button. And we're gonna we're gonna do the short button cup, button the shortest cup possible, okay. and stay over there. Waiting for it to warm up. Waiting, waiting. Wow, wow, that one's quiet. Yeah. So the Keurig that you used to have was. Maybe I should stop talking. Well, I don't think it matters. It's clear which one was a lot less. Well, not according to the decibel meter. It's not that much clear. Will I need to get it on the glass here? So, all right. So, noise. actually, the, the Keurig in, with this particular model, model. ended up being a little bit quieter. Now, I had one that was much louder than that, and I guess this one's a little bit fancier and, and is a lot but quieter. That, that's, that's a big surprise to me. This is, in my hand, the short cup from the Keurig. In Witty's hand, we've got an espresso shot. Yeah, so that's you know pretty ridiculous. This is not even... It's I was a big excited difference. when I saw this model of Keurig because I've never seen a Keurig with a quote-unquote espresso size before. And... That's a full cup of coffee. That's not a... Yeah, that's... Well, it's smaller than the regular... I mean, you need... I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty unbelievable. But, I mean, I guess that just goes to show you, again, the difference between a European-style coffee and an American-style coffee... Right. ...is that, you know, this only leaves me a little room for milk, whereas I got, pl I got plenty of room for milk and stuff there. Yeah. Well, here's what, what I can't really... What I really struggled with, you know, as, as we talked about earlier, a lot of Americans don't know what a Starbucks coffee is when they think, oh, I like the latte, I like an espresso... Or, sorry, a cappuccino. The thing is, it's so popular, I can't imagine who actually wants to drink that. Well, here's one thing, too, is one big difference. This does make a hotter 
cup of coffee than this does. Like right now, okay, I, so, yes, I can't so. even. Dr- I'm not even sure I can drink this right now. So we're going to talk about sort of giving it a second. I haven't. I haven't tasted. Well, one it of the reasons you get, you know, what are you going to do is you use milk. So, Dasha, where's the second this thing? Somewhere. He left it downstairs. It's so, fine downstairs still, right, well, but that's okay. There's, there's two different frothers, there's basically. Two froth, well, no, one frosts the milk for making a cappuccino. <clears throat> yes. One of these little inserts to the milk thing. And there's another one, which isn't as... Well, there's another one that looks a little bit different, but it's pretty similar. That if you just want to get the milk hot for like making a latte without getting it all foamy. So in this particular case, what you do, you have to drop it in here. There's a little place to put it. And if Dasha could bring the milk over... Yeah, and actually, you know, to me, the, the other one? I know, I know that you know, milk frothers aren't particularly expensive, but to me, the milk froth is one of the best parts about the you have uh, it espresso. Built in. Now, this isn't really loud at all. When you do it, it just kind of you can hear it. But you hit the button, and you can leave it as long as you want. And unfortunately, we've got a problem. What? This thing wasn't on. Oop, that didn't sound right. Take it off the thing. Should we hit the button? I got a disaster. I knew this, Party foul. I knew this episode was going to be a disaster. Dasha did the right thing. Right, where, do you have those clean hands? I got milk hands now. Cleaning are back in the box. It's okay. Yeah. Now, but look, all right. I'm going to just say right off the bat, no, I've we, tasted we, we, both we need, of no, them. We need, but we need to get this, put the, get the milk thing working. <laughs> milk thing I'm trying okay. to show you just how easy it is to make the cappuccino. If you, if you just let me do it, then everything okay, runs Okay, now there it's working go. fine. So now you get the sense it's not really loud at all. Um, and literally, if you, you know, we're doing it from the front and not trying to do it upside down and behind, like I just tried to do, this thing will spin around. You can let it go for two minutes or so. You can stop it midway through. And this is actually going to make a foamy uh, milk because we're using the that certain piece that we inserted. And you basically, and, and you can do that simultaneously to make it the espresso. Is this not what Starbucks does when they give you your, pretty much you what know, Starbucks does. your latte? Now let's be clear. You're gonna foam it. It's not the same as doing the hand right. uh, espresso, like if you go to a Starbucks or a real coffee shop well, in Italy. And I'm sure there'd be a ton of coffee snobs that'll tell us that neither one of these are good coffee. And you know, this is pod based coffee. This is yeah, convenience if you wanna, if you spend more than three, anything. If you want to spend three thousand dollars or more, you can get you know an actual professional level machine. This you're talking about two to three hundred dollars for an espresso, and you can re- really replicate lattes and cappuccinos. This thing is cheaper. And you know what? If if you like just regular Dude. long things of coffee, it's better. Honestly, though, I yeah, you, even, you didn't even taste this yet, I did you? Taste, taste it. it. It's pretty bad compared to the Nespresso, if you ask me. It just, it's yeah, just, just no. Down. It's yeah. just yeah. It, it's no comparison in terms of the flavor and the robustness of the. Now, of what the I don't. What the drink. thing for me is, given the cost, if I like this style of coffee, I would probably still just brew a pot of coffee. To be quite honest. Careful that milk there. It looks like it's about to overflow right. on us there. So, you know, <laughs> I think we might have... Yeah, I'm no, I'm with you. Like, if I wanted this, why not just go out and buy a $25 Folgers, or I don't know if Folgers make Mr. Coffee coffee pot right. and, and brew some coffee. Yeah, now you can see This here, has always been my complaint I've of the, the, the Keurig is, is watered-down coffee. And so, you know, pretty quickly you have a cappuccino. This is the frothy milk. I didn't spoon it out because well, I don't have a spoon. Um, and a lot of times you may actually want to do the milk first and pour the espresso in afterwards. But, you know, if you want to be quick, you can see there's two layers foaming, uh, forming. You have the coffee layer at the bottom that's mixing with the milk and then the foamy part there at the top. Now, let's do talk a little bit. I mean, Nespresso is very popular in Europe, right? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people have these at their homes. Nespresso in general is already And, and that's why you you learned about it. It was because right. you lived in Europe for a while and, and, that, and y'all turned me on to it, actually. Right, right, yeah. I didn't feel like having to walk around the block every time I wanted the damn coffee on Sunday morning or any other day. Plus, it was a lot cheaper over time rather than spending five or six dollars at Starbucks per coffee. You're spending a dollar, dollar twenty when you factor in milk or whatever. Right but now, with the new capsules, it's it's you know under a dollar. So it's um. Yeah. No. If you ask me, it's no contest. If you like a lot of water, go with the Keurig. If you like milk in. In robust coffee, if you go with an espresso. If you're the person that likes to have a long cup of coffee, standard American diner coffee, pot coffee, then this is fine and it's convenient and it does, you know, do teas and some other things like that. If you want, you know, if you're the person who likes what Starbucks is doing, and again, I'm not trying to single out Starbucks because I think Starbucks is great. I'm just using that as 
the example kind for, of a standard for lattes that we, and cappuccinos right. and things like that then you know this is your best value i would say short of buying a professional level that multi thousand dollar now the only now the only other thing i'll add to that this is that when i used the keurig i felt like i had to put a lot of cream and sugar in my coffee right and one of the things i really love about switching to the nespresso is that I don't add a bunch of extra sugar at all. I just add a little bit of milk, and I feel like it's a healthier cup of coffee as well because yeah. I'm not putting all this other extra junk into it in order to make it taste good. Yeah, I mean, because it tastes good already. I've definitely found that if you, especially if you use full milk or whole milk, oh, man, it's delicious. It's delicious. It's really that's good. freaking delicious. If dude. you use skim, it's going to taste different, you know, and whatever. Oh, that's, man. That's, that's your preference, but. If you just use whole milk, you don't really need sugar, I don't think. And and also, too, the espresso are nice and strong and have a lot of extra flavor. Right. I mean, we use the same amount of coffee in both of these, right? Yeah. And look T- which got. one do you want to drink? It's, an, it's no contest to me. Right. So, you know, there's our FWS recognition, recommendation in the celebrity death match of the coffee makers. The Nespresso has basically pulled a, uh, you know, choked out the Keurig. Um Maybe for some people, for certain things, you want to do tea with it too. There's a, there's a point, but really, you know. Well, and we'll see whether or not, you know, now that they're saying they're going to open up the Nespresso pods, you know, to other manufacturers, maybe we will be getting tea and yeah, hot so, chocolate so you, and you all these other before things. before with your DRM, basically, it's funny, they're going in opposite directions. They Nespresso do. Nespresso was secretly guarding its patent and saying no one can make pods except Nespresso. And Keurig was actually pretty open about it. The French government effectively forced Nespresso to open up with the who makes the pods. So you might see Starbucks making its own Nespresso pods pretty soon. I do hate the fact that they're both, or they, you know, Nespresso obviously was trying to do this until the French government stood in the way. And and now we see Keurig, they're all trying to corner their market. They're all yeah, trying but, to say, you, know, you have to use our capsules. That really drives me crazy. But, th- but that's, what, that's what printers did. I mean, basically these are just printers, right? I mean, printers back in the day, if you bought an Epson or you bought a Canon, you could only use... The Canon or the Epson one with right. their, their cartridges, and these are effectively cartridges, right? Now, eventually, patents ran out, and people started making. Ver- so it's the same, it's the same thing that happens. I think the celebrity death match has been decided. Well, you know, we're clearly biased, but you know, it, to each his own. Water versus milk, you be the judge. That's a good way to put it. You know, everybody drank milk from their mother's breast, and uh, <laughs> there's no reason to stop now with all the nourishment and nutrients that you can get. Of a nice glass of milk and doing the full milk in particular makes it good. But we told you, I like to order all of our capsules and coffee off of Amazon. What happens if you're not home? Now, Chris, you've had, maybe not with capsules, but it sounds like you've had some issues of late with uh, FedEx and UPS. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you you know, you and I both do a lot of ordering on Amazon. Well, you in particular. In particular, I I just do a lot of ordering because of the audio video work that I do. So I have to order a lot of products for people. And I, I work out of my home, so I have to be home uh, in order to receive these products. Or sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. You know, uh, we like to call bullshit when we see it. And I think it's time to call out a couple of companies on some bullshit. Uh, both UPS and FedEx, in my opinion nowadays, are really missing the mark. And, you know, I've ordered a couple things recently. I, I ordered a, a, actually a mattress online recently. Yeah, I could not believe when he said he was, he was like, oh, I'm thinking about getting a new mattress. I was like, oh, where are you getting it from? He's like, Amazon. I was like, how, how is that going to work? Oh, I didn't know exactly how it was going to work. It, I figured it, it, it let's didn't work worth that the shot. Well, well, it wasn't necessarily Amazon's fault, I guess. You know, he, here's my big gripe, I guess, about UPS lately is that they don't give you any kind of estimation about what time they're coming anymore. It seems like 10 years ago or so, and same UPS would FedEx. let you know. Yeah, same with FedEx. Yeah, I've FedEx pretty much says, too. Yeah, I think FedEx is a little bit better than UPS. But for me, the UPS delivery time is always by end of day or by 8 p.m., okay? And for me, that usually means somewhere between 6 and 8 p.m. at night. Right. And I'm okay with that if it's consistent. But one of my big problems lately is that it's not consistent. So... Okay, if if the package shows up at seven o'clock at night, but it might show up at two o'clock in the afternoon, or it might show up at twelve o'clock in the afternoon, that I'm basically stuck at my house all day long. I feel like I'm being held prisoner by these people waiting on these packages, and it seems like every time and I you, do. You know, here's the thing: you work from your house. 
a lot. You need to go out to jobs, but you have a right. luxury a lot of people don't have, which is you actually I do am a home. lot of your work from home. Right. A lot of people working during the day, it's impossible. Or even people who work part of the day, you know, just if you had a little bit of an idea, like you said this, we were, we were talking about this not that long, right when it happened. If you've got to get cable installed or the air conditioned man, or these people are notoriously bad, but they give you a four or five hour right. window. Right, right. You're telling right. me that the bit, two biggest logistical companies in the world right. with complex software to organize all these trucks globally right. can't tell you more specifically than all fucking day when the truck's going to get to your house? And here's the thing. There's no doubt in my mind that they can tell you. They just choose not to. You're telling me UPS doesn't know where their delivery drivers are at any given time? No, that FedEx do doesn't know. know? Of course they know. Now, I understand that they don't want to share the exact precise geolocation of their driver with every single customer. But what I don't understand is why they can't send me a text message, you know, two to four stops before they arrive that says, hey, we're going to be at your house in 30 minutes. Maybe you should go home. You know, in the case of my mattress, I left my house for one hour in the middle of the day to go get lunch. My mattress showed up and guess what? They couldn't deliver it. And it was really important to me. I actually paid extra money to get that mattress, you know, on the day that I wanted it, which was a Friday, and because I wasn't there, it was going to be delivered Monday when I could have gotten it for without paying extra shipping on Saturday and instead. Been, yeah. but, the, but the other thing that's crazy is we talked about, hey, these are big logistics companies, but if you use Waze, the app, right. the free app that anybody can download to get extra directions, you know, competitor to Google Maps, right. or sister product to Google Maps and Apple Maps and Bing or whatever, sorry, or MapQuest, whatever's out there. On Waze, there's a function where you can send anybody, here's where I am, here's where I'm going, here's my expected arrival time. So if, if a free app out of the damn right. Apple App Store or Android App Store and that's can not tell even... you where you're going, there's no way FedEx and UPS, and I don't need that. I don't need to track the damn tra truck because I'm right. sure there'll be some psychos who are, one, going to try to rob it or, you know, two, are trying to get out there and, you know, say, hey, man, where's my package? I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. So I don't expect them to do that. But at the very least, you could give me a window, a couple of hours, or say, and update me if it changes, right? Right, you know, like, right. Dude, live updates. Do you get bit by a dog, which happens to these guys? You know, say, fire, canceled. But just give me an idea. I mean, you had the problem with the mattress. Right. And I think we should tell everybody what happened after that. But similarly, just the last week, I ordered some wine. I've ordered wine from the same place multiple times. Now suddenly they're requiring a 21 signature rather than just leaving it somewhere. And it's been it's been like four or five days now and they always seem to pick the one hour when nobody's at home. Right. Like, it, it's, it's uncanny. It's almost like they're intentionally trying to not deliver. <laughs> it's, it's really well, fucking But you know what's got to drive the drivers crazy too, right? I mean, it, it almost seems to me that from a business perspective, it makes sense from an efficiency per, you know point of view that you would want to get that package delivered on that day and not have to try to re-deliver it three times, you know, and, and not get anybody and then well, have to make alternate arrangements. What happened when you tried to go pick up the mattress at the delivery center? All right, so, this is, this you know, I, I needed, you know, the, one of the reasons I need, you guys were actually coming into town on that Friday night, and that was why I, I wanted this mattress. I've been making you guys sleep on the floor for the past three years at my house when you guys come we, visit. We did, we did steal one of his beds to take to our own house, so it's hard to blame him for that. But. Well, but it was your bed, so, you know, that's a whole, that's that's a whole a lot, other story. Yeah. But, you know, so... I wanted this mattress on a, on a Friday night. I didn't want to make you guys sleep on the floor again. So, you know, I called UPS. Now, you know, to UPS's credit, they do allow you, if you miss, uh, if you miss the delivery, to call them up and go pick it up from, the, from their warehouse. Now, in this particular case, their warehouse was 40 minutes from my house. Um, but, you know, I drove out there basically, and they gave me a one-hour window, by the way, on which I could pick it up. So I drove out there. Uh, at 7.45, they told me I could pick it up between 7.30 and 8.30. I drove out there at about 7.45 to give them kind of a 15-minute cushion. Yeah. And when I got there, they said, driver's not back yet. You know, and I said, what do you mean driver's not back yet? You said 7.30 to 8.30. Well, you know, they're late. And that was about the most explanation that they could give me. And I ended up spending another 30 minutes on a Friday night when I was supposed to be eating dinner uh, waiting for this this mattress, which I had paid extra money to get delivered straight to my door, yeah. and and had to clean my car out in order to go drive forty minutes out to this UPS facility and pick it up, and uh, it it just drove me crazy. You know, not only did they 
uh, not give me any idea of it when it was delivered, but the time that they did tell me to come pick it up was completely inaccurate. Basically, the driver ended up showing at about 8.10, 8.15 is when they showed up. So I really only had about a 15-minute so window when I could actually pick the package up. Maybe they don't know where their drivers are after all. <laughs> Seriously, something's wrong if you ask me, we live in a fully connected digital world where everybody's got a smartphone, where everybody's got an internet connection. The UPS drivers are scanning these packages, you know, every time they make a delivery. And I think it's absolutely asinine that they can't give us a better idea of where our packages are. And, you know, it's just not good enough, if you ask me. Well, you know, we could probably go on all night about how bullshit this is. <laughs> but I definitely think, you know, you guys think about it. You guys know some better ways. You know, there are I, some ways to hey, get some in WhatsApp. I'd love to hear other people's experiences as well. If, you, if you've had bad experiences with UPS or FedEx, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, drop us an email or leave them in the comments of YouTube or the website or, you know, whatever the case may be. Facebook, Google+, Twitter, all of those wonderful ways for socially connecting. Happy to hear the stories about uh, your, your incidences with UPS or FedEx. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a, a Twitter campaign going one of these days. And wait, hold on. Let me let me actually add one little thing uh -oh. to this. Uh oh, we got them started. We should we should I be done never, with this. I should have never let you have coffee. Well, we've been we we've, yeah that's true. I should, only only alcohol, only downers, no uh, no uppers for Chris. Well, we've been bitching about UPS here for the most of the time. But it's FedEx, but FedEx is, is just too. as bad too. Well, FedEx is the one that screwed me with the wine delivery. Though. Oh, it is. Yeah, it was FedEx. Well, my most recent FedEx experience was that you know. I said I do a lot of audio video installations, so I, I often order TVs from time to oh, time. This is this is awesome, yeah, this is amazing. So I had a TV being delivered, and I actually didn't know if it was coming from UPS or FedEx. Maybe that was my mm -hmm. fault. Maybe I didn't check my uh, Amazon shipment right. uh, closely enough. But I came home a couple days ago from a full day of work, and there was a forty-inch TV sitting on my front doorstep. On, right in front of the front door. The picture, yeah, the picture, which you guys can see, you know, it could easily have fallen over. They're not even supposed it, to turn it up right like that, yeah, you know? Could I yeah, think God it wasn't a plasma. But, but, you know, I just, what world, in what world is it okay to leave flat panel TVs sitting on people's front doorstep? I don't yeah. know anybody who would take their TV and sit it out on their front doorstep <laughs> uh, during the middle of the day. And you know, I just... This is not okay, and you know something's got to be done. We're raising a stink because nobody else is, and it's time that somebody somebody does say something about it. Absolutely. Well, you know, we get the petition going, maybe or something. I, I don't know, but uh, hopefully, you know, we can we can keep bitching about it anyway. We'll call the bullshit. Tell us your stories. We'll, like I said, maybe try to get a, mo a movement going. But uh, otherwise, you know, we're gonna do what we always do, which is call bullshit when we see it here on After BS. And we're going to fuck that bullshit. And that's what we're trying to do here. We did it on the Nespresso versus the Keurig. We did it on the deliveries, apparently. You know, Chris is very wound up about this. <laughs> and, um, you know, we didn't really call anybody out, I guess, on the uh, streaming music service. We kind of gave them their individual props. Well, you know, I think on the, in that, everybody's no got their own view. little advantages. It's a no bullshit view. That's what you're going to get. Feel free to drop us a line on any other topics. Otherwise, you know, tune in next week. And, uh, you know, check out the archives as we keep adding footage. Take care. Cheers. Go, you're so aggravating.